name's Kwaku. I work for a company called Grants Tree. Um, we are a, an alternative funding specialist, um, specifically in government funding in the UK. Um, so we have a team of about 30 of us based just up the road in Clerkenwell. Um, and we work on two main products, I guess. Uh, one side is grants, so we work on uh, Innovate UK and H2020 grants. And then we also work on R&D tax credits. So are uh, any of you guys familiar with R&D tax credits already and how they work? One. Okay, so for the benefit of everyone else or some of you guys, I'll go through those, uh, those two sides of the business really quickly. Um, but first of all, it's actually probably worth me mentioning a little bit about like, the company um, that I work for. So Grantree, whilst we're a finance company, we do things very, very differently to probably most of the finance companies and accountants that you'd be likely to bump into in the startup scene. So first of all, we have a completely transparent culture. Um, this is not just the kind of buzzword that's come out of San Francisco, but we actually do have like, transparency throughout the organization. So we're allowed to sit in on pretty much any meeting that we want with anyone in the company. Uh, we're allowed to all vote on any decisions that are being made. Um, all business-wide decisions are made via something called the advice process, which is basically where anybody who is directly affected by that decision is given a sort of democratic vote on, on the decision. Um, and it also means that uh, we know how much every single person in the company is getting paid. Um, with a company of 30 people, that can be quite a contentious uh, topic, but it does mean that we have that kind of equality throughout, throughout the company. There's not a huge disparity in there. And pay, um, and that builds a certain culture um, as well. Um, the other thing is that we're all completely self-managed. So um, whilst there are two founders of the company, um, all 28 of us, 30 of us, are um, all on exactly the same level. We don't have any management, we don't have any subordination, and that's the way that we, uh, we foster a, a working culture, which is quite interesting sometimes, because everyone has a different um, remit of what they think that should mean. Um, but we're trying to push something through that's very different and, and kind of conducive with working with the kind of startups that we deal with a lot. Um, our kind of standard client, if you will, if there is such a thing, would be um, tech companies, um, either startup or scale-up businesses. Usually they're fundraising, usually they've got short runways, usually they're building MVPs. Um, probably a lot of the things that you guys are either in the midst of or about to be, uh, be working on over the next uh, six months to a year. Um, so yeah, let me tell you about the, the sort of services that we provide. So on the grant side, we help companies to apply for, um, for government funding in specific pools. So there's a very kind of restrictive um, guidelines on which kinds of pools of government funding you can apply for um, across both uh, EU consortium bids, so in H2020, that'll look like several companies from uh, different countries coming together to, to form bids that go from anywhere between 1 million to 10 million euros. And then in the UK, we'll have, um, so single company specific, often commercially match funded, um, Innovate UK grants. And at the moment, we're working on things like emerging technologies, AI, machine learning, um, et cetera. But what it means is that we're getting a lot of really, really cool technology companies coming through our doors on a day-to-day -day basis. You know, genius PhDs from universities with fantastic ideas that want to get those funded from really, really early stages. Um, so we like to always kind of have those conversations with those founders and, and see what's going on in the marketplace to see if we can help them get funding. And we manage those bids from start to finish, which could otherwise be quite, um, shall we say, uh, arduous processes for a founder to, uh, to get involved in. So often you'll see a founder trying to go for a grant, trying as much as they can to kind of explain away their, their business idea into a grant uh, application format. But this takes up a lot of time when a founder really wants to be running their business. Um, after you, go for it. Um, and then on the other side of the business is R&D tax credits. R&D tax credits is a piece of uh, legislation that the UK brought in about six years ago. Uh, that's supposed to incentivize businesses to invest money in innovation and in research and development. Uh, now, research and development is basically anything termed as overcoming a technical barrier of any kind, right? So, for example, if you're uh, building a new product, if there are iterative changes where you've had to um, 
let's say there was a, a problem in your product development that you have to overcome, and then you've had to do several iterations, so going through beta testing, et cetera, et cetera, um, you can claim back a percentage of that research and development cost from the government. Um, and that percentage can be either reclaimed back as cash from HMRC or as a tax exemption in future years. So what we help companies to do is maximize the amount of money that they can claim back from the government. Uh, and that's anywhere up to, for, anywhere from between around 20% and 32% of your R&D costs. That can include things like consumables, can include things like software, and it can include things like uh, outsourcing costs as well. So day by day, the kind of work that we're doing is sitting in front of founders like yourselves, um, sitting in front of uh, technical teams, and we're breaking apart uh, development roadmaps and finding out exactly where we can, um, we can claim that money back from, uh, from the government and kind of um, and pitch it as eligible R&D spend. So what we're going to be doing today with you guys is sitting in one-to-one -one sessions. I'm going to try and understand a little bit more about the, um, about the businesses that you're building, about the products that you're building, and where the work that you're conducting might uh, be eligible as R&D if it's taking place in the UK, if it's taking place as PAYE rather than subcontracting, rather than overseas, there are different percentages that you can claim back at and I can advise you on perhaps how you would best go about um, claiming that money back. In terms of grant funding as well, I'll be able to give a slight kind of overview of the grant funding landscape. I'm not a grant specialist, so please don't ask me for uh, advice on exactly which grants to apply for, but I've certainly got access to those kind of specialists, so hopefully we can touch on that in a little bit of detail. But I think the best way from here really is to kind of open up for questions. Um, if any of you have any questions about either grants or R&D, we can do that now. Um, and then we can take it into the one-to-one -one sessions after about 10 minutes of Q&A. Any questions? Yes. Yeah, sure. So, um, so the thing with an R&D tax credit specifically is it's a retrospective claim. So you have to have spent the money in order to claim it back. But you don't. It, a tax credit is actually a really poor name for the the piece of legislation because you don't have to be paying corporation tax in order to claim it back. So you can be pre-revenue, um, pre-profit. In fact, um, the amounts that you can claim back change based on your um, profit and loss position throughout the year. Um, so it can be more profitable for you, it can be more um, lucrative to claim back R&D tax credits at a point when the company is not profitable uh, and closer to break even than when you're actually profitable. So it doesn't favor later stage companies. The whole idea with um, this piece of legislation is to, um, as I say, to incentivize founders from young companies to start investing in R&D. It's basically um, the UK government's idea for boosting the economy and creating new IP. So it's actually meant to um, favor younger companies rather than uh, go against them. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Okay. Um, I may have not been paying enough attention, but uh, would it be possible to uh, give a definition uh, of R&D that, that is used for uh, evaluation? Mm. Yeah, okay, so it's a pretty gray area, um, and that's one of the reasons why uh, our company exists, because we can basically help a company to identify areas which might actually be eligible as R&D, but you wouldn't normally assume it. So the classic that, that we give is, okay, you're, you've got a, a back-end developer that is working on some kind of algorithm for um, the production of graphene semiconductors. That's pretty hardcore R&D. Yeah, there's a very strong likelihood that a high percentage of that person's time is going to be um, completely R&D eligible. But then on the other uh, hand side, you've got a, um, a web developer that's maybe designing a, um, a WordPress website, right? Now that's not research and development. 
But somewhere in that spectrum is a whole host of different types of um, technical expertise, technical activities that can and can't be claimed. So any time when there's a kind of bespoke process, any kind of new code being created, new IP is a very good beacon that, uh, that signifies that there's R&D going on as well. But there are also things like, um, like integration with, uh, with back-end systems or creation of APIs. Basically, anywhere where you're, um, you're overcoming a new technical barrier, uh, and we can show that, and we can prove it in a, an iterative step, um, that constitutes R&D. I know that's not necessarily the, the kind of clear answer that you're probably uh, after, no, no, no. but it does, essentially what we do, uh, it's probably worth me going into this in a little bit of detail, the process to put together an R&D claim, which is filed as a, um, an amendment to your, uh, your filed accounts every year, um, what we do is we sit down with one of your technical specialists. We have a team of tech and finance specialists in our office. What we're looking to do is get a complete download of all of the technical information that you guys have in your heads, right? We want to understand all of the steps that you've gone through, all of the failed attempts, everything that's caused you headaches in getting to your uh, product as it stands today. Um, what we then do is we uh, eke out each of the iterative steps that have gone on in that process. Because what we're trying to do is take your technical knowledge and translate that into HMRC tax speak. So the other half of the team is finance specialists, CFAs, you name it. Um, essentially what they'll do is they'll uh, assign a percentage of each of your uh, development staff's time and salary to each of those iterative steps and we'll submit those two documents as the R&D claim. So it's a technical and a financial narrative that acts as a justification for that, um, that reclaim. Cool. Are there any IOD specific grants that you're aware of? Hmm. Um, I think it would. So I did actually ask one of our, um, our grant specialists to have a look at the one pages that went through. Um, they said that there was one of the, of the companies in the room, uh, DoorDeck, is that, okay, yeah, they said that there was some interesting uh, stuff that you guys are working on that may be grant fundable. I think that um, what's really important to mention with the, uh, with the grants landscape is it's incredibly stringent. As you can imagine, every young company wants to get grants of some kind. Um, so what we do is we specialize in certain pools of funding. There may be some that are out specifically for IoT, but not that we're currently working on right now. Really, the way that we would see it is m more on the uh, repositioning of your technology to meet certain criteria. So, for example, there are grant, uh, grant funds that are specifically uh, aimed at smart cities or specifically aimed at machine learning. So, what you'll often see is a company, like a much larger company, um, applying for a grant for an area of development. So if they have a machine learning team or if they have a data science team, they might apply for a grant specifically for a project within their company, but not for the, the company as a whole. But I can find out some more about IoT specifics for you, that's fine. Uh, sorry, say that again. The Yep. Mm -hmm. So IP version six is that the sex in the forest forest kind of thing? Yeah, you've uh, you, it's not my specialty, I'm afraid. No. Yeah, but I can definitely ask the question. I, what I would say is I'll um, I'll circulate my uh, details, and if there are any specific questions that you have around the grant funding landscape, so for H2020, for example, I can get those in front of our grant specialist and get you an answer for that, if that would be of use. Awesome, yeah, sure. Anyone else? No? All good. Well, listen, uh, as I've said, I'm going to be around um, for the day um, with 20-minute, half-hour slots for any of you guys to bounce any ideas off of me about your uh, business, about the eligibility for R&D and grants. But the other thing that I was going to say, um, I was speaking to uh, Kansu earlier, that... Uh, Obviously, a number of you guys are funding, uh, or fundraising, rather. Uh, one of the things that Grantree has done over the past six years is built a fairly strong network of investors, angels, funds, and VCs. Um, it may be worth uh, bouncing some ideas off around the pitch decks that you have already, um, if that's of use. 
if you want to get an understanding of maybe some of the KPIs and criteria that some of those investors are looking for, we see a lot of pitch decks and we're able to give some, what I would like to think is pretty reasonable advice around investment as well. So any of those things, please feel free to grab me. I'm going to be around for the rest of the day. Awesome. Thanks very much, guys. Cheers.